All right, welcome everyone. Uh, Chrissy here. I wanted to tell you all about our latest release, Snowball, which features two commands by Stuart Moore that are going to blow your mind. So I'm just gonna jump right on into it. Uh, oh, for people who present PowerShell, I learned this from Twitter. Uh, if you just put break or return at the top, it will prevent you from accidentally running your entire script like that. Uh, so I totally recommend it. All right, so the version. The version that, uh, that we're working with in this specific video is important because it might change uh, if you have a future version, especially after 1.0. So let me go ahead and run this selection. So I am currently using 0.8.928 and this was released uh, on Friday evening. It's uh, the 24th of February. One thing that I do wanna point out is SQL Server versus SQL Instance. You'll see both of them and both of them work in every command. Uh, we're just going away from SQL Server and in 1.0, which, uh, which we'll begin working on very shortly, it is going to be SQL instance across the board. So even if you see any references, don't even worry about it, both will work for now. All right, so let's just jump right on into it. We are going to look at some of the local backups for localhost. And here we have uh, just one AdventureWorks 2014 database, and I'm going to restore it. So here's the basic syntax, restore DBA database, specify your instance, and then specify the path, which is local to the actual SQL server that you're running. So when we do this, we can see, now what I really like is this output. So you can see the instance name, the database, the owner with recovery, et cetera. And then we also show you the script that was generated by SMO. We do use the same thing that SQL Server Management Studio uses. Uh, so yeah, you could just copy that if you would like. And I, again, I want to emphasize that it is relative. So, you know, this is my, before I ran it on localhost, if I were to try this on SQL 2016, which does not have a local host or local, sorry, which does not have a local backups, AdventureWorks uh, a database backup, then it will not work. So if we see here, I ran that with a verbose, and it'll say file does not exist or access denied. The SQL Server service account may not have access to the source directory. And of course it doesn't because it doesn't even exist on SQL 2016. So let's look at, um, at something that does exist. So if we see SQL 2016 C temp, we have an AdventureWorks database there, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And boom, totally worked. All right, now next, what I really like is that uh, we could do really cool things with these two commands, especially restore DBA database is just out of this world. So let's go ahead and look at a, uh, a database backup created by Ola Hallengren's backup procedures. So we can see that per usual, we have full diff, and logs. Now what this does is it goes and it checks for the latest full, the latest diff, and then all of your log backups since then. In this case, we only have one log and one diff, but if we had a ton of them, wouldn't matter. It just takes the most recent one. So let me go to crazy awesome. And we can see here that crazy awesome is empty, uh, except for this one called logs. And what we're gonna do is we're going to restore a database uh, for this, we're doing it on localhost. And then the path is we're going to point it to the Ola Hallengren directory over here. We're going to specify maintenance solution backup. And then we'll specify, now by default, uh, restore DBA database will restore to your default log directory and default data directory, but you can change that. So we can see here, we'll specify the data directory and we'll specify the log directory. And now it's done. When we go and we take a look, we can see here's the log. And then there are the two uh, data files. So that's really cool. And now this is really nice. If we go and we look at SQL 2005, we go to the backups on that server. We can see that there are a ton of backups. Do I want them? I think I could delete them because I'm about to make some more so quickly. So I'll just go ahead and delete these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use get DBA database and I'm going to specify, don't get any of the system databases for now. Let me show you what this looks like real quick. 
So that's about what it looks like. It just goes in and gets this rich SMO object. And then what we'll do is we'll pipe that to backup DBA database, and then we'll specify the backup directory at C colon backspace or backslash backups, which again is relative to the SQL server. So it will appear here. And if we look here, then here they are appearing again. All right, now that we have that, we will use get DBA backup history and we'll grab the last one for DB2005CL80. We'll see if it actually worked because I believe that I had left that in, uh, in the wrong mode, which would be funny. Okay, here we see that, uh, oh, at, there it is, at 9.29 p.m., we did have a backup uh, so that that database did exist and I didn't mess up this demo too badly. Now, this uh, gets the last uh, full differential and, um, and logs, but since, uh, since the last full, but since we don't have, we didn't back up any diffs or logs. This is essentially a last full. What we're going to do is we're going to pipe that, the information that we get to restore DBA database, and then we'll do a with replace. So there we have it. It was as simple as that. So we, we got the history and we piped it into restore DBA database. So you can pick which one, which one of the history you want. As long as the files still exist, it will work to restore that. And we didn't specify a database name. This is smart enough to go inside of the database, uh, sorry, inside of the backup and see what the name is and then restore it that way. So we can even do it by instance. Now this is amazing. Let's go and look at slash slash NAS SQL 2016. And this is, uh, it's obviously a SharePoint uh, instance or an instance that supports SharePoint. If we look inside, we'll have the full diff and log. And again, uh, I did just make, uh, just went through, made one full, made one diff, and then I made a couple logs. And what we're going to do is we're going to get child item on this entire directory, which looks like this. We're going to pipe it to restore DBA database. Now you'll notice that I didn't include the, um, the maintenance solution backup specification. And that's because we have a, a failback. If it can't find, uh, if restore DBA database can't find a proper dot back file, then it will also check for the maintenance solution structure. And then if it finds that, then it'll restore it. So we really wanted to make this as easy as possible for everyone. So let's watch this. This is going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to restore this entire instance. So if we look, this is my SQL server, my local one. So right now, oh, check it out. Did you see that? It was processing it. Um, and, and so it goes through and it processes those directories and then it finds what it needs from it as if it's magic. And then it will restore that. So let me go ahead and quickly take a look at Oops, I accidentally opened up GitHub. Uh, there we are. You can see that it's restoring. So if I just hit refresh, it's just doing that entire thing. So this brings me a lot of confidence as a DBA that I don't have to worry about, you know, if, if I have an instance that just blows up, but I have my Ola Hallengren backups, it makes it very, very easy to restore the databases. And we do have, uh, a couple export scripts that allow you to export the login. So those, but that's a, a, a separate release, but you can look it up. It's export uh, dash DBA login in uh, DBA tools. So we are already done with that. Just restored the entire thing. Very, very cool. Let's go back here. Oh, wow. Okay. So this one, we have a, uh, this restore time, you can specify that what time you want it to stop at, right? So if we get the backup history, the entire thing from this, we can see that there's a whole bunch of them, right? Then what you could do is you can pipe that and you can specify a restore time. So in this case, I want the stop at to be 30 minutes ago and then just go ahead and replace the database. All right, and so that created an error log. Dang, let's see. Oh, you know what? So I had an issue with the way that the backup was set, um, and uh, and unfortunately this didn't work out so well, so I'm just gonna report that. Let me show you actually how to report it. If you do have an issue with DBA tools, and if you go to DBA tools, 
io slash issues then it will automatically redirect you to our site so if you can see here even if you just go to our github site you click here and issues then you click on new issue and you'll see that there are 137 issues not all of them are bugs you can see that some of them are new commands and things like that so let's go back to this all right so that usually works i'm not too sure it's probably something that happened on my side but i'm not too sure so uh the next thing i'm just gonna clear this abomination all right so the next thing that we are going oh we are going to pipe get dba database to back up to restore on a different instance so this is essentially like copy sql login but way better all right so we are going to get uh have a database called dumpster fire 4. let me make sure that that still exists all right and it does and we can see it's actually never been backed up. Uh, it's never had a full or a log, uh, but it has had a full, so that's nice. Sorry, it hasn't had a diff or a log yet, but it has had full, so that's nice. All right, so what we're going to do is we will get this database, we'll pipe it to backup database, and we'll specify the backup directory to be DC SQL test. And let me go there and just clear this out. You can see that I've been playing with it all day. And then what we'll do is we'll pipe that to restore DBA database. This is just the coolest. Oh, it exists already and it won't be overwritten unless you say with replace. So let's say with replace. So it read it. It did. That was so fast. That was so awesome. So if we look here, it made the backup. And then now on, on the 2016 instance, um, then it did that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from one instance to another with the databases in this way. So if we have, um, so this is my local host and we will be doing it on SQL 2016 slash V next. All right. So there's no databases here, right? Nothing up my sleeve. Let's go back. Sorry, this is a screen that you don't need to know about at all. All right. I mean, well, you could. It, this is a, this is actually uh, for another command that we have called find DBA command that I'll be getting into later. So let me go ahead and show you. All right. So we see that nothing's there. Now what we're going to do is we'll get all of the databases on SQL 2005, but we won't get the system databases. And then we'll pipe that and we'll make backups and then we will restore that and we'll just throw in dash replace with replace even though we don't necessarily need to i'll just take that off because why not it's more accurate all right so here we go so you could see that there was a snapshot on there and it was smart enough to know not to attempt to back up the snapshot so it skips that it also if, if you have a uh, database that's not a normal uh, it's not a, a, in a normal state, then it'll skip that one as well. All right, so now we've made all of our backups and now we are restoring to vnext. So if we look here, we'll refresh and look at that. That's so cool. So this makes it a whole lot easier for people who need to back up um, to one uh, file store or file share and then copy it over to another one with a different set of credentials and then from there you can just uh so you know you could put in a copy between here and then you can get that directory and then pipe it to the restore so there's so very much that you can do this is such an incredible uh, release and we're very excited about it Stuart Moore is the author of these really amazing commands uh, and he wrote this uh, blog post that goes into a lot of detail. So he talks about backup and restore, gives uh, some, some in-depth information on that. And then he also walks you through a number of, um, uh, of a number of commands and then it also shows you the outputs and things like that. So, um, Thank you so much for joining us. We would also, if you're interested, you know, if you have any issues or if you have any questions or if you want to participate and become a contributor, we love 
uh, the community uh, contributing to this, you can just go to DBA tools slash Slack. And then what that does, it allows you to join our Slack, which has a whole bunch of SQL Server professionals. Currently, I believe there are, um, there are, let's see, uh, about 1800 people or so are SQL server pros in there. So yeah, again, thank you so much for joining us and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bon weekend. As we say in Belgium, I, I know that I said that, that the video was over, but after it was done, I went to log an issue, uh, on GitHub and, and I went through, <laughs> I went through here and I went all the way back and I couldn't find it. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just run it again so I could get the error and I'll have, you know, that oops. Oh my God. I did it the wrong way. I'll have, you know, that it totally works. So I'm really not too sure. So we could see here because it did pipe in the history. Um, it skipped this, it skipped the two that I had already deleted and, uh, and then it, it worked. So you could see that this totally works and it says stop at and it puts a proper date. I'm assuming, uh, potentially that the issue before was that, uh, the, the time difference was way too small or something, but anyway, this totally works and uh, I'm glad I feel a bit of redemption. So, all right, for real bon weekend. Bye-bye.